Hello and welcome to my very first episode of From Scratch series. I'm going to start off by letting you guys know that I have never done anything like this before. Recording gameplay, audio and video editing is completely new to me and I'll try to learn as I go on with this series. Unfortunately the first 20 minutes of recording got corrupted so the beginning of the video is in lower quality than the rest of the video. Now about myself, I have been playing the RuneScape and RuneScape private servers since 2007. I stopped playing RuneScape before Countlet was released, the game didn't feel fun anymore and I had already completed most of the things that I wanted at the time and achieved new max gear. I've also done a lot of PVMing and some PKing. I decided to create this series to find that joy and fun aspect of the game that I had when I first started as a clueless new fishing lobsters and shopping you logs in free to play while trying to figure out how the game works. Now for the account I won't be setting any too big goals for now. The main goal at the moment will be to get a pawn from scratch in free to play. I will be trying different money making methods and find out what kind of methods exist in free to play. Later on I would like to keep the account build as a pure slash circer slash meet to try out some PKing money methods in members and later on as the account progresses I will try to level up the combat stats accordingly. I think that's it, hopefully you will enjoy this series as much as I enjoyed making them. If you have any gameplay suggestions or recording wise let me know, I will try to improve this series as much as I can. The very first thing that I tried to do for some food money to complete stronghold was to pick monks robes at the monastery, but I completely forgot you need 31 prayer to access the first floor. I think it's about 130k per hour to pick monks robes and the only requirement is to have 31 prayer so it's 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 a decent money maker. Since the monastery didn't let us in, the next best thing would be to loot anything you can in the wilderness. It's not as good as uh, looting in members, but I should be able to get enough for some low cost food. So I ended up picking Taros for like 5 minutes for 1.3k price check. I couldn't really be bothered to pick them longer since no loot was showing up on the ground, but it's still alright. Also I remembered there is a team game shop nearby and I want to test if there is any money to be made in selling them to the GE. I managed to get 1.2k from selling Taros. I didn't really check how much the capes go for in the GE, but sometimes you can sell things for a completely different price than what the GE is showing for. Hopefully 1.2k will be enough for one inventory worth of team capes. So I managed to get almost a full inventory worth of team capes, which actually doubled my money. At the time blue team capes ended up selling for 137 GP each, making them most profitable. Pink and gold team capes were also worth double what they were selling in the shop for, but the green and red team capes were actually selling for less, not sure what the reason was. I guess people don't like those capes as much as they like the others. Ok we're ready to head into the stronghold for that 10k GP. I don't think I need this many wines, but walking back here would be a pain in the ass, so it's better to be safe than sorry. I can't remember the last time I came to the stronghold, but I think we were able to spam through the doors at one point without having to give them a correct answer. I remember in pre EOC that there was this quality of life option to be able to rest and regain your run energy. That would be really handy right now, not going to lie. And obviously I wasn't ready for the 2FA requirement to claim my coins, so I'll be doing that real quick. And we're finished with the stronghold. I'm not quite sure what I'll be using this 10k on, but I would like to get enough money to start crafting. It should be around 50 to 100k XP hour while also earning around 100 to 180k GP. Before heading to members I want to finish most of the free to play quests as well and train few skills up so it will be a little bit easier to start training in members. One more thing before leaving is to claim the boots. I always thought they were purely cosmetic, but apparently they give you slight defensive bonuses while also giving you negative magic and range bonus. While on my way back to the GE I remembered that most of the people fishing nearby for salmons and trouts dropped their fish. I'm not sure how much money you can make per hour, but it's a nice extra if you have no money at all, and since Cooked salmons are worth more than the raw ones, you could probably make some money with cooking them as well.
Now I sold everything and decided to invest that money into making dice. I think it should be around 200k an hour making dice, but the prices change and you could easily make more or less. I decided to make red dice, but at the time I didn't know you need two leaves for blue, two onions for yellow and three red berries for red dice. We were able to get 200 red berries, which should be around 66 red dice. I think that doubles our current bank value, putting us around 22k when everything is done and sold. Now the sad part about making these dice was that I didn't realize at the time that you could just right click and use the berries on Aggie to make the dice. And here we are, finished making all the red berries into dice, managed to get 67 dice in total which should be around 27k if the price checker is correct. Now another money making method nearby is to buy chalk packs. It should be also around 200k GP per hour. I'm just going to use all my money I have right now to see how much they sell for. So everything nearly sold. I insta sold the chalks for 3 coins each and over half of the red dice went for 402 GP each. I'll just leave the rest of the dice to GE to slow sell. I also left some cheeky offers to GE while we try another money making method with the rest of the cash. Now I was planning to buy Eyes of Newts for the next money making method, but unfortunately I wasn't aware that you need 10 quest points, 100 total level and 20 hours of game time. Not going to lie, I wasn't very happy when I found that out. At least we spent some money to buy the wizard hats from the magic shop for 2 GP each and I think they were going for over 600 GP in the G, which somewhat inspired to try out the next money making method. Since we were back at pretty much square one, I decided to buy wizard hats in the magic shop. At first I was just buying the blue ones, which went for around 600 GP in GE, but later on I noticed it's more money per hour to buy both of them. There's also a bank deposit nearby, so at least I had that going for me. There is also a fishing shop nearby that sells fishing tools. I'm not sure how much you make per hour buying them, but it might be worth trying it out. I was buying the wizard hats for around 1 hour and we ended up with 99 black wizard hats and 232 blue ones. I think this method was around 180k an hour when I was buying out both of the hats. And also you barely need any money to do this, so it was quite a good method considering there are no level requirements and it's free to play. Since the hats are slow selling and I don't really have any decent methods for teleporting around the game, I decided to get an air stuff and some runes to start training magic at hill giants. But like 3000 mind runes should be more than enough for level 25 magic to teleport to Barok. Hopefully most of the hats will sell meanwhile. Boom, level 13 magic. And that unlocks fire strike from a max hit of a 2 to an 8. Nice. And level 25 magic. We can finally start teleporting to Barok whenever we're too far away. No more walking from Port Sarim to Barok. I know I could have used the Chronicle Teleport to get to the Champions Guild, which is quite close to GE as well, but I'll be needing magic later on anyways. All of the wizard hats sold while I was training magic. Both of the wizard hats were going 100 GP more than what they were priced for. Now I haven't tried a full hour of chalk buying, but I think with 130k it was close to an hour. I used Runelight's tag plugin to tag Fortunato so it would be easier to track him and Word Swapper to swap words quicker. I don't think I saw anyone doing this method so the shops were always full. This method was also around 200k. Realistically the Chugs insta sell at 3 GP each but they can also slow sell for 4 GP each. I left the Chugs in G to slow sell them while I finish some quests to be able to sell and trade normally. And Torix quest is done. Now, I know you don't really need any guides for this quest, but I can't praise this plugin enough. You just find the quest you want to complete and it shows you literally everything you need to know. What items to bring, where to start and where to go next. It technically turns RuneScape quests into typical MMORPG style quests, 
where you don't have to Google for guides. Goblin Diplomacy completed. Cook's Assistant, probably one of the hardest quests in RuneScape. Sheep Shearer, Shear, Shearer, Shearer, Shear, completed. Imp Catcher completed. X marks the spot completed. Mistelin Mystery completed. Vampire Slayer completed. The Restless Coast completed. Romeo and Juliet completed. I was actually trying to finish Shield of Arrow, but uh, you can't even join the friend chat without having 150 total level. I don't know. And this is it for the first episode. If you liked it and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Also let me know in the comments if there was anything you dislike about the video or if you have any suggestions, then also let me know. See you in the next episode.